Welcome to Static Electricity Lab. I have electroscope. It was invented by Abraham Bennett from England in the year 1787. Why do I have electroscope? I have electroscope to demonstrate the static electricity. And what is static electricity? Static electricity is imbalance of electric charge on a surface of an insulator. Then I do need an insulator. Well, I have a CVC pipe. This is insulator. What makes it insulator? This is not a conductor. That means the electron cannot move freely on this pipe. That means if somehow you can transport some electron on this pipe, this these electrons won't be able to move freely because insulator do not allow electron move freely. That means there would not be any flow of electrons. That means electron will be sitting and electron would be at rest. So you can accumulate electrons on an insulator like a CBC pipe. The CBC pipe from neutrally charged to become negatively charged. How can you do that? Well, we're gonna use a process called charge by friction. What is charge by friction? Well, it's a fancy way of saying, I'm gonna rub this CVC pipe with my hair. Well, I have something better than the hair. I have the animal fur, I'm gonna rub this CVC pipe with animal fur, allowing the electron to transfer this CVC pipe, and that electron will be accumulated and gonna be resting on this CVC pipe. Of course, we're not gonna see it. That's why we have this electroscope. If we beam this to the electroscope, and this leaf will repel. Currently, this electroscope is neutrally charged, so is the CBS pipe. Let's draw that. This is neutrally charged, and this is the electroscope, which is also neutrally charged. I'm gonna allow all the electron, or as many as possible, as many electron as possible to transfer it to the CBC pipe of the insulator. Now I'm going to draw this right now. Now CBC pipe become negatively charged is because so many electrons move from animal fur to the CBC pipe. Now I'm going to bring it. Let's call this scenario one. Let's call this scenario two. Let's call this scenario three. I'm going to bring this to the electroscope. And let's see what happened. If I beam this close to electroscope, and let's see what happened. Again, I'm not gonna touch it. So this is a metal ball, and this is a metal leaf. That means this is conductor. That means electron can move freely. That means flow of electron possible. When I beam the negatively charged CBC pipe over here, that will push all the electrons on the metal ball to as far as possible, and that is to the metal leaf. That means there would be redistribution of charges. That means this metal leaf will become a negative charge and these will become positively charged. Negative, negative repel, so they will repel by friction. Now I'm gonna bring it close. I did not touch it, so this is called the charge by induction. So let's see what is happening. So this is called charge by charge by induction. 
So this is negatively charged, so that all the positive gonna remain over here, and all negative gonna come over here, as far as possible, so they repel each other. So that's why they're gonna repel each other, so the leaf go away from each other. Okay, now scenario four, if you remove, the rod, what happened, is gonna go back to where it was before. Okay, so this is called Charles by, Charles by induction. I'm gonna ask you another question and that is number one, can you feel charges? Number one. Can you create that much choices? Number three. What can you do by that choice? Oh, let's answer this question, two question first. Yes. Yes, in fact, yes. In fact, you can create uh, more choices. More than, more than that. Next question is how much charge you can create by using calm and the here? When you rub the calm against you here, how much else you can create by combing you here? In fact, oh yeah, that's the uh, that's the that's the answer. I'm not gonna give you. You're gonna have to approximate how much charges you can you can you can create. Now pause the video. And and then uh, and then uh, and then and then try yourself. Uh, exactly create one microcoulomb, which is more than that. How do you how do you know more than that? By converting this one to as a unit, which is coulomb. One times ten raised to negative uh, six coulomb. So this is more than that. Now, what can you do? The, you can create charges by using calm and here, that's, that's good. But what can you do? What can you do by these charges? What, number four, what can you do? Do with these charges. You can pick up a piece of paper by using the calm. You can pick pieces of paper easily by using that one coulomb charges. So I'm gonna create charges at home. So I'm rubbing, 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 rubbing more. That means I'm creating the maximum of one coulomb. You'll never be able to create more than one coulomb of charge by rubbing the calm with your hair. See, this is the evidence of charges and this is what you can do by charges. 70 micro coulomb how can you do that but pause the video do a coulomb times i have to have a micro coulomb down these chairs right i have to have micro coulomb over here so micro coulomb micro coulomb cancel and i have to have coulomb over here so now one micro coulomb is one times 10 raised to negative six coulomb this is the black i think black is fair more visible now I have to have electrons because I want to find how many electrons. So I must have electrons on the top. I have to cancel Coulomb. So Coulomb must be at the bottom. So one electron is uh, 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. All right, now <laughs> what can we do? Micro Coulomb, Micro Coulomb, cancel, Coulomb, Coulomb, cancel. Negative, negative 70 times of uh, divide by 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 6 plus 19 43.75 times 10 raised to um, 13 electron that many electron now we can change it to the scientific notation so 4.375 times 10 raised to 14 electron and this is the final answer. I'm gonna give you three charges. So let's make it negative. Let's make it positive and let's make it negative Okay, 
so the distance between this to this let's say three like 0.3 meter and distance between this let's say 0.2 meter okay now let's say call it q1 let's call it q2 and let's call it q3 what else i need to give you in order to solve this problem i have to give you the charges now let's give you the charges the charge q1 let's say i don't know um something microcoulomb i would like to give you uh let's say uh, negative three microcoulomb and um, let's call it uh, five my positive five microcoulomb and let's call it negative four microcoulomb okay all right now what we need to find we need to find uh the force on q3 force find force on q3 due to q1 and q2 so we have to find the force on q3 due to q1 and q2 and let's do it um f31 so let's do three and one first and remember k q1 q k q3 i should write q3 and then q1 over r squared so k is 9 times 10 raised to 9 newton meter squared over coulomb squared times q3 we have q3 negative 4 times 10 raised to negative 6 we have q1 negative 3 times 10 raised to negative 6 divided by 0.2 plus 0.3 so 0.5 squared now what do you get 9 times 4 times negative 3 9 times negative 4 times negative 3 divided by 0.5 squared is 0.25 so this times 10 raised to 9 minus 6 minus 6 10 raised to 9 minus 6 minus 6 newton so that's uh, 0.43 newton okay but check my math double check my math at home by calculating so now i'm going to do the blue i'm going to use the blue to do the q3 and q2 so f32 what three three means this three I'm gonna make it blue. What is two? Two means this two. I'm gonna make it blue. So just to make sure you understand, is equal to k q three q two over r square. K is nine times ten raised to nine newton meter square over coulomb square times q three is negative four times ten raised to negative six. Q two is uh. 5 times 10 raised to negative 6. You probably think, those of you who don't know, you probably think that I see 4 microcoulomb. Why did I write 4 times negative 10 raised to negative 6? Is because you have to convert it to SI unit. So negative 4 times 10 raised to negative 6 microcoulomb. Okay? And this is 5 times 10 raised to negative 6 coulomb. And this one is negative three times 10 raised to negative six uh, coulomb, okay? All right, so divide by, now the distance between this one and this one is 0.2 squared. Now times five, time, divide by 0.4 times 10 raised to negative three newton, five newton. Now, so we have F31 and F32. So F31, plus F32 is equal to, F31 is 0.43, minus F32 is 0.45, 0 0 4.5, 4.5. So it's approximately 4.1, negative 4.1 Newton. Now, how much force is acting on Q3? So this is Q3. I'm gonna draw Q3 right here, Q3. I'm gonna draw a, a blue line and I'm gonna draw a green line I want you to pause the video and write the magnitude of the blue line and write the magnitude of the green line okay now let's try together the magnitude of the blue line must be the blue line represent what the blue line represent blue line is a small one okay so the small is represent a small number why do why, why it does represent a small number is because this is F31, 
Why is F31? Because this is negative and this is negative. Negative, repel negative. So this is, the blue one is repulsive. Repulsive. So then how much it is? 0.43 Newton, okay? So there is a, a 0.43 repulsive force between Q3 and Q1. So write it by hand. There is 0.43 repulsive force between Q3 and Q1, just for your own understanding. Now, what is the green one? The green one is negative and positive. So the attractive force, because negative is attracted to positive. How much attractive force between these two? We already found that from 4.5. There is a negative. This is there is a negative sign. I forgot because this is negative. So negative. This, if you have arrow like this, that means negative. So I don't have to write negative. So I'm gonna write 4.5 newton. This represent F32. That means there is 4.5 newton attractive force acting between Q2 and Q3. All right. So the axis slip is uh, let's. So I'm going to make it similar to the lesson so that you get to show your understanding. One meter, one meter. That means uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3. They are one meter away from each other. So let's give it charge. So let's say Q1 is 200 microcoulomb. This is 100 microcoulomb. And this is also negative 100 microcoulomb. Why not? Now, what I want to give you is F31. So this is 3 and this is 1. So F31. I tell you F31 is 90 Newton because I see the number I choose that I see is very easy to see F31. What I want you to find is F32. That's it. What is F32?